G'day guys, it's Adam from Video Show Me How, and in this video, I'm gonna run through the geometry and the steering component setup of a Jeep JK. Let's get started. Now this would have to be one of the things that I get asked most about, and certainly one of the things that probably took me the longest to learn about since I've owned this thing, and that is all the different components that live underneath the front of your Jeep, because there are quite a few, and I guess what they all do, and that's something that Took me a little while to sort of get to grips with and understand. So what I thought I'd do is make a video that really just shows off all the different components underneath the front of your JK, what they do, and how to solve things like flighty steering or loose steering and those kinds of things. All right, so to kick us off, we will start with the tie rod, and that is this guy right here. So as you can see, it runs all the way across is the front of the Jeep and it links straight to your steering knuckles which live in here. That's this component in here. We have a knuckle up the top there and that's what joins through with a tie rod end that goes all the way across and joins across this side to the other steering knuckle. Now the function of this one is super easy to remember or how I remember it anyway, is that it ties the two front wheels together. Now this particular tie rod is from Synergy Manufacturing. It's a whole lot thicker and I guess that's probably where the tie rods go wrong. I mean sometimes you'll find in the uh, steering component in here the tie rod ends can get a bit flogged out and you need to replace these. You do have a little joint in here and that can sometimes flog out if, if you're not really taking care of it. The standard units however aren't serviceable. So you won't be seeing any of these little guys uh, in the bottom of the tie rod ends because they're not serviceable. So I guess at some point, if you still have your standard tie rod, you're probably going to need to replace it because at the end of the day, the joints won't last forever. The other thing that can go wrong with these guys is essentially they can bend. The standard unit isn't all that thick. The steering dampener, which is what this guy is, normally lives under here somewhere. That isn't the greatest if you're cruising along through a bit of a rock garden or having some fun. It kind of can get pretty messed up pretty quickly being that it sort of hangs down pretty low and uh, it's obviously the first casualty that comes across. Probably better hitting that than, than your diff hat, but it's probably not the best spot. Also because of that, it tends to hang low and then push upwards on your tie rod itself. That can cause the thing to have a bit of a uh, banana shape. I have in the past used this guy to kind of bend it back the right way. Uh, safe to say that lasted a little while, but surprisingly, but not forever. And the same with any steel, I guess, is once you've bent it uh, a few times in the same spot, it tends to uh, get quite weak quite quick. So at the end of the day, uh, this is the tie rod because it is tying your two front wheels together. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the drag link, which is this baby right here. Now this guy connects one side to your steering box, which is up in here, we'll have a look at it in a tick. The other side connects to one of your steering knuckles. By that dragging that knuckle back and forth as your steering box moves, and we'll have a closer look and more detailed look up here in a minute, because you have your tie rod, which we've just talked about, because they're tied together, both steering knuckles tied together, if the Jeep pulls this way on the drag link, it's going to pull the, this knuckle this way, and because it's tied together, it's gonna push this one that way. Uh, hang on a minute, that way. So obviously then you turn right. If the steering box pushes this drag link this way here, it's going to connect here, it's gonna pull through your tie rod, pull this tire that way and you're gonna turn left. So it's pretty sort of straightforward when you think of it like this. This is the tie rod, ties your two front tires together. This one here is your drag link. And the way I think about it is it, it literally drags uh, the tires from, from left to right. Now up in here a little bit closer, you can see that this is the joint that connects to this little guy here. Now this arm here, this is called your pitman arm. So if you ever hear about drop pitman arms, uh, this is the unit that they're referring to. Now I'll talk about in a minute 
why drop pitman arms are, uh, are a thing, why they exist. This up in here, if you have a look on the other side, is your steering box. And then connected to the bottom of your steering box, there's something called a sector shaft. Down the sector shaft and then bolted to the sector shaft is your pitman arm, which is this unit here. It's a solid unit, of course, being a steering component. Connected to the steering component is your drag link, which is this guy here. And when this guy turns back and forth this way and this way, just like that, it's of course then dragging the whole arm down to your steering knuckle here, pulling that back and forth, dragging it back and forth that way, which of course then down the train, we've got our tie rod, which joins both ties together and turns your Jeep. Now there are some aftermarket parts here as well, as you probably noticed, if it's looking a little bit different to your Jeep, um, don't worry, no doubt you will upgrade soon. <laughs> That's part of the JK life it seems. Uh, we have a aftermarket uh, drag link there. This is by Synergy as well. It's a much uh, thicker unit. You have serviceable uh, joints on the ends here as well with the uh, grease nipples up the top. Uh, serviceable joints, serviceable uh, tie rod ends. That boot is ripped, uh, I've just noticed, and I'll need to replace that. But other than that, um, these are a great, uh, a great unit, much, much stronger. You can replace this entire end section if you really need to. Obviously, uh, greasable nipples here as well. Um, and under the sector shaft side of things, um, this is called a sector shaft brace. So it sort of bolts on to your track bar bracket here and braces the sector shaft as well. The sector shaft brace is something that I wish I had have done a long time ago and to be honest, would have been one of my very first mods. The difference that this made to the tightness, if that's a thing, of the steering was, was pretty immense. What this does is attaches to your track bar bracket, which is what we're gonna talk about next. Your track bar bracket sits over the top of your steering box and then braces this with a there's, a, there's a bearing up in here and braces your steering uh, sector shaft here. If you're running much bigger tires, the pressure and the forces on, on your steering components is, is a lot more than, than factory. And what this guy does is really just firms up the steering and I noticed an immediate difference uh, in how tight the steering uh, felt. So I've done a whole other video on the full install for this guy here, which I'll link up the uh, corner up here somewhere. So feel free to check it out. Give it a thumbs up if you find it helpful. Next up, we have the track bar, which is this guy here. We've got the little hump, uh, which clears uh, your diff here. Now this one is a aftermarket unit, is a Terraflex Monster track bar. Um, and to be honest, this is something that I would have upgraded first before I upgraded anything else. The difference that this thing made, similar to the, the sector shaft reinforcement bracket here, this was sort of similar. The difference that this made to make everything feel just a whole lot tighter was immense. So if you have any sort of play in your track bar and particularly the track bar bushings, which live in here on your standard unit and in this one here, if you have any sort of play uh, you will probably start finding the Jeep will encounter some death wobble, which is well publicized. Do a quick Google on that and be prepared to be amazed. If you haven't experienced it before, it is something to behold. Um, this is probably, in my experience, one of the most common causes. It's either your track bar or it is your ball joints, which live here and here. So as far as what the actual track bar does, it does perform a pretty critical role and that is that it keeps the whole of all of this centered underneath your Jeep. So what you'll find, and if you've done a lift kit, you will know this on a Jeep. If you don't have your track bar installed, which you shouldn't until you've dropped your Jeep down after installing some new springs. If you don't have this bolt in or a track bar in, you can turn the steering wheel and rather than the wheels turning, all you're doing is actually turning the whole front of the body will move and it's a it's quite a weird experience and the reason that does that is if you think about what we talked about earlier with our drag link here and how if our steering box up the top through the pitman arm wants to turn sideways it's going to drag this steering knuckle across and of course 
with the tie rod joining the wheels together, it's gonna to try and turn the wheels. Now, if there's nothing holding all of the steering components to the actual chassis of the car, it's just gonna move the whole front end. And that's effectively what happens. So we need something to really tie all of this sort of stuff, tie your diff to the chassis of the car. And that's the function that the track bar does. So as you can see, on one end, we're effectively tied to the diff housing here, and that's tied here through the track bar bracket. And on this end, this is tied to the chassis rail, which is this guy right here coming down. And that's what ties a whole lot together to the actual chassis of the car. And that enables, effectively, enables you to turn your steering wheel. The next thing we're going to look at are the sway bar links. And they are these units just in here. So you can see they effectively are the things that tie your sway bar to the diff on one end and then to the sway bar on the other. And that's what this unit is here. It runs all the way across the front. This is a electronic sway bar disconnect motor here, which comes on the Rubicons. I somehow was able to jag a turbo diesel which is what this type of Jeep is with the off-road pack in for two years, I believe. It was an optional extra and gave you a bunch of Rubicon kit as well as rear locker and other good stuff. Um, the electronic sway bar disconnect came with it as well, which is pretty cool. So it runs all the way across, down, and here's our other link here and joins together there. Now the sway bar is quite important for keeping stability, especially when you're on road. It's one of those things you want stability when you're driving on the road. Um, and when you're off the road, you want as much flex as you can possibly get. And that's where things like either the, the electronic disconnects is awesome, because what that does is actually it's got a little um, bushing in here and it separates the bar, which enables full flex, which is awesome. Other options are the manual versions, which um, allows this component here to disconnect with a pin. And then this whole section pushes up the top and allows full articulation at the front, which is why Jeeps are so awesome. Cool, so the next thing we're gonna look at are our arms and our upper and lowers. So these are called control arms and you have four of them. You have two underneath, so a lower control arm, one there, and another lower control arm here. Then you have two upper control arms. One connects to your diff on this side and runs across to attach the chassis here. And the other one is just up under here connects all the way across to your chassis on that side. So you have a lower control arm, which is this unit here, connects to the bottom of your diff. And then you have your upper control arm, which is this unit here, connects to the top of your diff. And the same on this side, you can see them both there. We have our lower control arm running across here, connecting to the bottom. And then our upper control arm, which joins to the top of the diff, runs all the way across, connecting to the chassis rail up the top. Now the main reason you would want to upgrade your lower and upper control arms is so that you can get the right amount of caster. Now if you've ever experienced a Jeep that drives on the road like a boat, very flighty, very loose steering, that sort of thing, and it almost always happens after you've lifted the thing and put some bigger um, springs and what have you in, um, some new suspension components, all of the above. The main reason for that is as you lift the Jeep, you reduce your caster from standard. If you do have really flighty steering or any of those other symptoms, there's a fair chance that your caster is out. So I'd recommend going to get a, a wheel alignment done and seeing what that percentage is. You'll find that after you lift it, you're going to increase your negative caster, meaning your degree of caster is going to decrease. But effectively, you need more positive caster, which means your pinion here needs to go down. And the easiest way you can do that is either lengthen your lower control arms and shorten your upper control arms. Because if you think about that, they're the two arms. They're connected at the bottom and at the top of your diff. So if we lengthen the bottom one and shorten the top one, it's gonna cause the whole, whole lot to sort of pivot. And as it pivots down, you're gonna increase your positive caster to the point where the pinion here, the diff, is almost below horizontal. In any case, there you go. There, there is your lower control arm and your upper control arm that lives obviously at the, uh, the top of the equation. 
the reason why you would want to upgrade these guys is to sort out your caster and that's that's the proper way to do it there are things like AEV in particular do a good set which is the geometry correction brackets what it does is fix your geometry and effectively it does that by lengthening your lower one shortening your upper control arm and that gets you closer back to a, a standard caster like the Jeep would have come out of the factory. So they're probably your two options if your Jeep's feeling really flighty. One, I would recommend going and getting a wheel alignment done. Next step is either to cheap out and get some geometry correction brackets, which do do the job, but be aware you'll lose a little bit of clearance here underneath. And ultimately they're not as strong, but they definitely do the job. Or if you've got the extra bickies and you wanna do it properly, Go get yourself a full set of control arms and that will allow you to have full adjustability and to really dial in your caster to exactly where you want it. And there you go guys, that's the main wrap of all the different components that live underneath the front of your Jeep. If there is anything you've spied that you'd really love some more information on, please let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to come back to you to give you a bit more information. But at the end of the day, it is relatively simple underneath the front of a Jeep, particularly when you know what you're looking at. And hopefully this video has helped you understand what parts do what. And as far as potentially what you might need to replace, or if you are on the upgrade trail, what you might wanna look at upgrading next. As always, I hope you found the video useful and it has given you some information along the way. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna leave a comment, be sure to do so down below. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks guys, and we'll see you in the next video.